I have the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus here, and today I'm going to show you how to manually download and install over-the-air updates with your computer. Now, a few years ago, I had purchased a Samsung Galaxy S smartphone that was directly from Verizon, and I did this because of the price. I was just needing it for tutorials, but the price was good, so I went ahead and bought it, and it turned out that I was not able to install over-the-air updates on this device through tra traditional means because I had not inserted a Verizon wireless SIM card. I'm not completely sure if this restriction is still in place, but I thought that for those who are coming across this issue, or maybe you just want to have a different way of installing new updates, that I would show you how to do it from the desktop with the Samsung program called Smart Switch. So what we have here is a Samsung Galaxy S10, and let's work on the entire S10 series. Again, we have the S10 Plus here. So first we need to download and install the Samsung Switch application. Once that's installed, we can then connect the Galaxy S10 to the PC with a USB cable. And then with that done, we can go ahead and open up the Samsung Smart Switch program on our PC. Now if this is the first time you've done this, you'll get a prompt at the bottom asking if you want to allow Samsung Smart Switch to communicate with this device. Just go ahead and tap yes. And then you will be taken to this page, this Get Connected. Now that you have Samsung Smart Switch open, it will not detect that you have a phone connected until you tap that OK button. But once you have tapped that OK button and granted permission, then the Samsung Smart Switch computer program will detect that you are running a particular Samsung device. So let me show you how that looks. So again, to show you how it looks on the computer, we have downloaded and small installed Samsung Smart Switch which is something that I recommend any Samsung smartphone owner to do so that it installs the proper USB drivers and so that you can actually create backups of your device. Now when you first open up Samsung Smart Switch, you're going to see this screen. It's going to tell you to connect your device. And now that we have connected our device, it will then detect what model Samsung device you have once you have granted access on the phone, like I mentioned before. We can do a drop down, see more information about the model name, what current version of Android we're on, and our internal memory and storage option that we currently have. Now, if you have an update waiting for you, even if you don't see it on the device, it's highly possible that you will see it here. And this is how I used to have to update that Verizon Samsung, I believe it was the Galaxy S7. I used to have to update it through Samsung Smart Switch with this method. So once everything has been connected and is set up properly, all we have to do is click on this update button. It will detect what version we currently have and what the latest version is, tell us how big the download size is, and then we click on continue. And then lastly, we click on all confirmed. And now we wait for the computer to download the update. And that's another advantage of updating via Samsung Smart Switch. It's possible that you might not have a reliable wireless network available or even a wireless network at all. 
and you do not want to download four gigabytes on your mobile data plan. So you can easily download this update onto your computer and then through your mobile broadband or through your broadband and then send that update to the Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S10 Plus, or the Galaxy S10e through the USB cable and then it will install the update on the device. As you can see, this process is going to take a quite a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video and then pick it back up when it gets close to finishing. So we have just hit 100% and I would say that took about 15 minutes. And as soon as we hit 100%, our Samsung Galaxy S10 rebooted. And while our Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus is in download mode, we are given yet another progress meter up on the screen in Samsung Smart Switch. Now this transfer is going a lot quicker. And not only do you see a progress bar on the screen, but we also see a progress bar on the Samsung Galaxy S10 as well. And just like Samsung Smart Switch says, during this entire process, be, make sure that the cable does not come unplugged, as that will interrupt the process. I know that first wait period, again, it lasted about 15, maybe even 20 minutes. Um, if you unhook the cable and interrupt the process at the tail end of that, then you're going to end up having to wait a long time to re-download all of that data again. And now that we have hit 100% again, our Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus has rebooted, and we are told that the software update is complete. Now we have had a couple of reboots. We were first at the boot animation screen for a little bit, and then the Samsung Galaxy S10 rebooted to a blue screen, telling us that the device is erasing the data. And it's usually not something that you see when you install an over-the-air update. And as we can see here, the data hasn't been erased at all. This even though it looked like it was going to do a factory reset, our data on the device was not deleted. It was just part of the update process, and it was erasing different data, not doing a factory data reset. So this is the first boot cycle after we have installed that over-the-air update manually. So just like with a factory reset and any other over-the-air update, your first boot back up into Android can take longer than normal as the phone has to optimize and set everything back up. And there we go. We are back into the Android operating system.
and it has it is if we had just downloaded and installed that over the air up- update naturally through a wireless network. So that is how to manually update your Samsung Galaxy S10, Galaxy S10 Plus, and Galaxy S10e without having to download it over your wireless network.